Hey y'all, welcome to Power Up with Power Automate. I'm so glad that you could join me today. I understand that there's a lot of tracks you could have chosen, but you chose to spend it with me to learn a little bit about automation. So thank you for being here. I want to send a warm welcome out to all our first timers, whether this is your first conference, uh, your first time venturing into the Power Platform, or even your first Scottish Summit. It's my first too, so this is, this is special for me as well. I'm Azure, just like the cloud. And today we'll be talking about Power Automate. This is a beginner session, so maybe you have no idea what Power Automate is to begin with. That's okay. Maybe you have seen some buzz around the internet, but it looked a little too complicated to start, or you've tried it and didn't quite get the hang of it. That's okay. You're in good hands. By the way, has anybody seen Big Daddy Bill Gates today? Mama Cloud has been seeing my name around the internet, and she's a little curious why she hasn't gotten any credit. If you see him, just, just let me know in the chat and I'll, I'll go meet up with him. I want to send a big thank you to our sponsors today because without them, we wouldn't be here. We've got Script Runner, the number one for PowerShell management, DQ Global, driving data quality, Proximo 3, Microsoft Consulting Specialist, Redspire, Agilisys, and Hitachi Solutions. And of course, a very big thank you to our volunteers who put this conference together. It was no easy feat taking not only a conference from in-person to virtual, but making it 400 tracks. There is so much more content to consume that it really, they've done an incredible job. So thank you volunteers. So quick and dirty about me, we'll go into my background a little bit later. Uh, but I work for GSK or GlaxoSmithKline, which is the uh, pharmaceutical, consumer healthcare, and vaccines company. And there I work as a bioprocess engineer. If you would like to connect with me online, you can find me at amac underscore and cheese. Uh, and there I talk about Power Platform, memes, and my backyard groundhog Alfredo, who should be resurfacing soon since it's almost springtime. Today's session agenda, what is Power Automate? my background, and then we'll do the fun part, which is the demo to show you how this all comes together. And then I will send you off from the nest with some resources so you can get started. So what is Power Automate? It's magic. But technically, it is Microsoft's no slash low code automated workflow solution. So you can take care of what's important and automate the rest. It's replacing SharePoint 2010 workflows. Uh, if you've never used them before, that's not an important detail to you, for, but for those of you who are, it not only has uh, the ability to replicate what you were doing in SharePoint, but it's got so many more applications. It has integrations with your favorite Microsoft apps and other ones external to Microsoft, so it's not just limited to a small uh, use case. Uh, so how can this be done? Um, thinking of a couple of examples, perhaps you manually uh, check a SharePoint site on a Monday morning and looking for some sort of Excel workbook. And then you take that information from there and you put it in a SharePoint list and then you send an email to whatever appropriate audience. There's a flow for that. Uh, perhaps you want to know when your hashtag is used or a certain hashtag is used on Twitter and you would like some notifications. And perhaps you would like to send the person who used the hashtag a message of their own, a thank you message. You can make a flow for that too. Perhaps you receive an automated email with attachments and you normally manually move them to a separate folder and rename them. Flow can do that as well. And I mean, even bigger use cases. So perhaps you run a help desk of sorts where people can request something. I'm gonna say it's ice cream because ice cream sounds nice. And perhaps these requests come in from SharePoint or maybe they come in from uh, an actual company system, an official system, you have an email and you then have to decide who's gonna take that request. We can make a flow for that. Flow can do all of that for you, including you can make a round robin assignment scheme so you don't have to decide who is going to take the task and then assign them a planner task. Maybe send the submitter a chat message. Thank you for your submission. It'll be taken care of. You can do that too. And maybe just a fun one. You're on a road trip. You want to expand your playlist because yours is getting a little stale and you throw out a tweet, you can have people respond to that tweet and have Flow add a couple of songs to that playlist. These are all actual use cases too that I know of that people use. So it's not just about you know, sending notifications from SharePoint. It's not just for work, it's also for play too. So I'm sure your mind is probably thinking about some use cases that hmm, maybe I can automate that. 
All right, so I'll talk a little bit about me and then we'll go to the demo, I swear. So as I said, I work as a bioprocess engineer for GSK and I work on the pharmaceutical side. My job entails uh, providing technical support for drug manufacturing operations at the plant that I work at and also project management. So I do things uh, like manage change notifications. I help author some regulatory filings, participate in audits. So my day job has nothing to do with the actual building of um, flows, uh, but I like to moonlight as a citizen developer. My background is in biochemistry, so no true coding experience or professional experience in here. And my tech experience is pretty limited. I taught myself HTML in the fifth grade so I could pimp out my Yahoo GeoCities website and then later on my MySpace, which was a lot of fun. And I never really thought of that as a career choice, of course, at 10 and put that down. And a couple of years later, uh, when I was about 15, I took on an internship at a local university uh, at a computational chemistry lab where I was building stackable uh, ring structures that were chemotherapeutic targets. And this was all done in Linux. So I was doing things such as analyzing their bond uh, strengths, lengths, energies, steric hindrance, which was a pretty neat experience. Again, never thought that this could be applicable outside of academia. And I did that for a few years, including breaks on university holidays. And then I graduated, landed in manufacturing, and that's where I ended up. So fast forward with me to December of 2019, and I receive an email from our newly minted digital data and analytics group. And the email said, hey, we heard you might be interested in this uh, Microsoft automation software. It can help you reduce some redundant computer tasks. And it was an invite for a Florida course put on by Microsoft. Showed up had no idea what I was getting myself into. That email was very vague. And so we were building an approval flow in the class. And I have to be honest, y'all, I, I didn't know what really was going on about 50% of this. But by the time I walked out of this class, I was already thinking of use cases in which I could use this and wasn't even thinking large scale, but just small things where I could see trouble spots in my everyday work. So this is how you found me in the back of my friend's car on a Friday night with my hotspot and my laptop as we were traveling out of state to a half marathon. And I'm trying to build a flow. That is how excited I was. And really that excitement hasn't dwindled any. Uh, if you're interested, this use case is Monday mornings, our safety team at site sends out a, a safety topic for the week. It's a PowerPoint file. Sometimes they would send it out in an email, uh, but as not as a OneDrive link, as a physical copy. And then sometimes maybe they had edits and had to resend it out. Sometimes they would send it to the whole site. Sometimes it would be to managers. Sometimes they wouldn't send it until we were midway through a meeting or even after the meeting, even though it was edited by you know, roughly 8 a.m. on a Monday. So you can see how this could pose a few issues. And my idea for the flow was, well, let's make a copy file and replace it. So we copied the file from their SharePoint site, stick it in my work, my, my department SharePoint site, and whatever file is currently there that's, you know, labeled for the safety topic just gets replaced with the most current version from the safety site. That completely eliminated the need to worry about if it's you know really the most recent version that they were going to be sending out that day or who had it. And because that SharePoint site was connected to Teams, we had that file. We had it always displayed as a tab. Problem solved. Nobody's ever thought about this ever again. And it was it was great. Saved a lot of time. So I've only been working with Power Automate for about 14 months, but we are in a committed flowmance together, a very serious relationship. And this experience has really led to a ton of wonderful things. I started posting about Power Automate in our internal Facebook group that's for the Power Platform. And most of it still to this day is about Power Apps and Power BI because we rely heavily on that. And I caught the attention of the owner of the group who is now a friend of mine and his name is Simon. And he encouraged me to post more and encouraged me to join a women in tech group, a friend of his uh, who has a group named Foyen. Uh, at the bottom right, I have the handle that you can check them out. So Women in Tech for Textilers, it's all people friendly. And there it is a really great bunch of people who we've got, you know, motivational speakers, how to get into tech, mentorship and demos, everyone from beginners to advanced just to create a welcoming community. Uh, and really, I did my I did my first demo there last year, last June. And in that first session, I was told I was doing a great job. I had folks wanting to mentor me and then encouraged to get into conferences, which is kind of how I've gotten here. 
Last year, I had the opportunity to teach the Power Automate session of GSK's first Power Platform Bootcamp with Simon. It was a wild success and hope to do a few more. So it's it's been a really great experience being in, in this community, and I'm really grateful to be a part of it. They're so very friendly. Okay, I have talked enough about me. Let us go to the actual part everybody's here for, which is the demo. As you know, Mr. Incredible says, it's showtime. My motto is it's flow time. So we're going to do a walkthrough of the Power Automate website. We're going to build a flow or two uh, around a templates. And so now it's time for you to put on your thinking caps as to what actually might be possible. All right. So we are here at flow.microsoft.com. You might have heard me say I've built things in Flow and you're like, well, now I'm confused. What is it actually called? Flow and Power Automate are the same thing. Flow is the OG name of Power Automate before it got rebranded to be part of the Power Platform. So there is your little history lesson for today. And I want to point something out. I see things around y'all. Let's have a frank conversation because I feel like we're friends now, are we not? I don't want to see y'all saying that you're building power automations or power automates or automations on the internet. If I see this, I'm going to come find you. What we are building are flows, like workflows. Um, so that is what we are building in Power Automate. Okay, got it? Remember that, that one thing. Um, so I don't know if it's been mentioned uh, or may maybe you've seen, if you're using Microsoft Teams, there is a flow button. If your organization has it enabled, there is a flow button that's accessible from within Teams where you can start building your flows. The issue is with that one is you can't quite see your personal flows. So those are flows that are built from that, 060, uh, that Office 365 group. So if we're to go over here and click on my flows, it's going to show you the different types. So cloud flows, this section is where it's going to be any flow that you own but isn't shared with anyone else. We've got desktop flows and business flows. We are going to talk about these today because these are not part of the standard package for Power Automate, but perhaps your organization has it enabled. Uh, but shared with me is going to be, I don't have any here, but if you were to have a team flow that you've built in Teams, this is where it would show up. Additionally, if you were to share a flow with someone or someone was to share one with you and you are not the sole owner, it would also show up in this as well. All right, so we move back to home. As you can see on, on that page, it was driving us towards some templates. And if we scroll down uh, as well, Microsoft gives you some options as to maybe what you're what you're looking to work with. We will go into templates just a little bit later. But if you were to type a keyword into here, maybe it's an application. Maybe you're looking for a certain app, you know, an action. So an application could be with GitHub. Um, the task could be maybe copy file or the industry of uh, business. A bunch of templates will pop up with some ideas of how to get you started. These are already built for you and maybe give you a little bit of a head start on what you would like to do. They may or may not suit your needs and that's totally okay uh, because actually these flows can be modified. At some point you will be building from scratch, which is the goal, but for now it would be a great idea to explore what templates are available to you. I do wanna point out one resource uh, ahead of the actual resource uh, slide that I'll have at the end, but this is Microsoft Learn. And if you come here, there is a ton of documentation for Power Automate that, uh, you know, videos and little quizzes and whatnot, you can utilize this to your advantage. There are things in here that I haven't used it, uh, you know, in Power Automate, like AI Builder, but there is content on here, things for robotic process automation, uh, desktop flows. If you are looking for a little bit more for what we don't discuss here today, you can probably find it here. All right, so we are going to explore the popular connectors here. So you can see the popular services. This is also, if we were to, you know, click here, uh, if we were to click here, the 457 services, this is where we're going to go. This is the same thing as the connectors button. It's going to take us to the exact same place. But I wanted to point out that every time you log in, this number may be the same or it may be different. I remember roughly six months ago, there was just over 400 connectors. And as you can see that it's not just limited to Microsoft. As I said before, we've got Dropbox here, we've got Yammer. Uh, so you may find exactly what you need. So we're gonna click in here. 
And these are the list of supported connectors. As you can see, there's a section here that says recently added. You may not recognize some of these names and that's totally okay. It may be a custom connector that you're never going to use. So don't worry too much about that. But as we scroll through, you can see that there are so many options. Uh, you know, Microsoft Forms has integrations. We've got common data service. If you're using Power Apps, you need, if, or you're using an SQL database, you've got that as well. We've got Instagram, GitHub, YouTube, there's a lot here. So if you're looking for something to see if there's an integration, my suggestion is just to type it in the search box because these aren't in alphabetical order. So you'll be scrolling forever. You may notice that also there are two different types of connectors. So we have ones that say premium underneath and ones without premium underneath. So the ones without them are standard connectors. So those are included you know, if your account is enabled. Um, you will be able to use these standard connectors with little to no issue. Uh, the premium ones are an additional cost on top of a, so if you don't have a standard license, you may need a premium license in order to use it. You, If I'm not mistaken, there is a trial period. So if you see a premium connector you would like to maybe make a use case for to demonstrate to management, you can um, you can sign up for a trial for it. And uh, so you can you know get a feel for it. So if you've just got the standard connectors, I would go ahead and just toggle to the standard connectors in the drop down, and then it'll just give you everything that's included in your standard license. And again, then you can use the search box. So if you were to click on, let's say SharePoint, any of these connectors, it will tell you the possible types of triggers that are associated with um, this connector. So triggers are an event that starts your flow. So it could be when a file is created in SharePoint, could be when a list item is deleted, you want a series of actions to happen after that. These are what is available for SharePoint. Some connectors don't have a trigger they may have associated actions with them. So just keep that in mind. And then of course, Microsoft is going to then give you a ton of templates that may be available to you using the SharePoint connector. Again, we're gonna go into template soon. But first I wanna show you the types of flows that are available to you. We are going to focus on the first three. So we've got automated, instant, and scheduled flows. There is desktop flow and business process flow. So, um, Desktop Flows uh, uses a screen recorder and can record your clicks and then turn that into a flow. So any manual process you may have, that is a premium feature, as is the business process flow. So it'll guide you through a multi-step process. So we won't talk about these today, just the these three. So an automated cloud flow is triggered by a designated event. So like SharePoint, we said when something happens, we want something to also happen. And here is a list of possible triggers just to give you an idea. This isn't the exhaustive list and it's also not in alphabetical order. So again, you can use the search for uh, triggers bit and go from there. So um, I am, we're gonna, let's just, I'll show you in here. Let's just pull this test. So it's a great idea to name your flows before you do anything else. Flow will end up um, assigning a generic name to it, like the first couple of actions, or it'll have the trigger, like an arrow, and then the actions, which isn't very helpful when you're looking in your My Flows list. So this top uh, box here is your trigger. So when an item is created, and so it... Power Automate is going to ask you for all of the necessary information that you need in order to use this trigger, or else it will it'll give you an error here. Uh, so it's giving it's asking for a site address. So this would be a SharePoint site address. If you cannot find a SharePoint list that you frequently communicate, you can always enter in the URL into custom value. And once you hit enter, it will also release the list names that are available to you. The same thing. So we'll just do this and our list name. It'll give me the list of names of things available in here too. Same thing. If you cannot find your list name, you can enter custom value. I'd say the limitations is you do have to have access to the list in the first place in order to be able to create the flow for it, even if it's just say viewer access. We'll click the three dots here, which gives us some more information. Uh, we have the ability to rename our steps, which I do find very helpful. So perhaps, you know, in the, in the demo a little bit uh, later for the use case, we will rename it so it's a little bit more specific because by the time you're building your flow and this is collapsed, you want to know at a first glance, like maybe where the item is actually created. Maybe you've got a flow with multiple shared point lists and you want to be specific about it. 
Uh, you can always add a comment to this. I find this very helpful. We'll show a little bit later. Uh, maybe you need to add a, a short comment to this so you have the ability to do that. I like using it for expressions. There is settings, so it's got timeout functions, concurrency controls, uh, retry policies, uh, several different things in here. And then we've also got the ability to peek code. And so here, this is behind the scenes of Power Automate. Uh, I might not have mentioned before, but it's written in JSON. We also do use Markdown and HTML for formatting, but Power Automate is written in JSON. And maybe you want to look into that a little bit further in your studies. I'll show you what the outputs look like in JSON. It's actually pretty neat. All right, so we're going to go back here uh, to create we're not going to save this and we're going to go to instant cloud flow. So an instant cloud flow, or I like to call a button flow, is something that is manually triggered by you. So it's not automated. Uh, in this case, I like using the manual trigger flow. So this would be for a certain instance. Perhaps I need to pull a couple of rows from um, the SQL server. And I, it's not information that I, I need all the time. So maybe I wouldn't make it an automated flow, but perhaps I just need a certain subset of data between two dates um, and need to pull a couple of rows for something. That's what that would be for. It's also used for power apps. It's used for selected files, excuse me, selected files say in OneDrive um, or SharePoint. When a button is clicked in Power BI, those are the buttons. So somebody has to click a button in order for it to happen. And then the last one is a scheduled cloud flow. And it's just like what it sounds like. So on a particular date time frequency that you choose, that is when the flow will run. I like using this for a reminder for expense reports uh, at the end of the week. So every Friday at 7 a.m., I have Power Automate send me a chat message in Teams to say, hey, are you ready to submit your um, timesheet now? And I have you know buttons at the bottom, yes, no, later. And if I select yes, it's like, yay, great job. You can pay your credit card. If I click no, I have it so that it's a loop. Um, and it'll say, okay, I'll come back in two hours to see if you've done it. And if I say, remind me next week, then it will come back three days later and say, okay, it's time to um, submit your expense report. And so those are the different kinds of things that you can do with it. On the left-hand side, you'll also see a couple more things. So uh, we've got data sources. So we can use tables, connection, custom connectors, and gateways if you use those. Monitor. Uh, this is, you can check the activity of your flows, which is pretty cool. So it gives some reports there. There's AI Builder. I have not played around with this yet, but there is documentation in MS Learn surrounding it. And Process Advisor is a, um, a feature that is in preview right now, but uh, perhaps you don't know whether a process that you do manually is worth automating. It will record your actions and then tell you, yeah, actually it, it's worth doing, which I think is a really neat feature. And then solutions, I'm just starting to get into these, but I, I love the idea of perhaps, you know, a person, an employee on your team owns a flow. If they leave the company, what do you do? It's still going to keep running potentially without them or fail, or you don't have access to it. And solutions is a place where you can plug in your flows and, many people can have access to them. So I don't know too many details about it yet, so I would advise you to look at the documentation as well, just to get an idea, a clearer picture of that. All right, so we are going to now build our first flow, and we're gonna use it building a template. Um, we're gonna use the use case. I have built a flow for our safety team at site. So when there is a safety incident involving an employee, it could be somebody fell from a ladder, it could be um, a slip, it could be an electrical hazard. We have employees submit, um, we have employees submit this incident into a SharePoint list. This is originally where it was lived and it will become more robust later. Uh, but to keep the system very consistent, we have employees plug in some information and then a resulting cascade of actions happens from that. We are gonna build something very basic and say, we just want to alert the team, the safety team, of when a new incident is reported. So instead of using email, we're going to use Microsoft Teams. I do want to show you the SharePoint site first with what some of this information looks like. This is just a, 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 a condensed version, so I picked a few things. So we have an incident category, the type of incident, date and time, an employee name, and a description. So you know, the first one's a spill, there's a lack of personal protective equipment, and the description of it is the employee forgot their goggles and was splashed in the eye during the spill. So those are just a few columns that 
um, Power Automate is going to use in order to create this flow. So we'll go back here and we're going to type in a couple of keywords into templates because you can see as we keep scrolling, there are a ton and there's really no rhyme or reason as to how these are organized. So it would make it a little bit easier for us to be able to search for them. What I think is really cool about templates is one, um, these are both Microsoft made and community made. As you can see for this one here, it's made by Microsoft. It'll show you the type of flow it is. So it's a scheduled flow. Uh, the icons here represent the different types of connectors that are used in here. It's not all of them, but a few. And then how many people are using it right now? Which I think is pretty neat. And then you can see the ones that are made by the Microsoft community. So perhaps you have a flow and you think it's gonna be really useful package it up, send it to Microsoft, and they'll review it. And maybe they'll actually put it in here as folks to, for folks to use. And you can see this one is actually quite popular, 139,000 uses for it. So we're going to look for ours. We're going to plug in um, a few keywords. So we're just going to do Teams, new item, SharePoint. And that should narrow it down for us. One also really cool thing about uh, templates is that you may see something that partially suits your needs. It's okay if it doesn't fulfill everything because you can modify these templates as needed. Say you don't want to send a Teams message, say you want to change, you know, you want to send a chat message or you want an adaptive card to be able to assign, um, you know, maybe a safety incident coming in and you want to be able to say, I need somebody from the safety team to claim this safety incident to do the investigation. You can have put a button in there and then it can go update the SharePoint list to say, this is going to be the reviewer. So you're not limited to what is actually, or what is just in the flow that is given to you. You can delete steps, you can add steps. It's very flexible. Okay, so I think we're gonna do post a message. I think this is the one, post a message to Teams when an item is created in a SharePoint list. So we're gonna click on this and you're gonna be brought to the screen. It's gonna tell you what is happening in the flow from a high level and then it's going, it may ask you to sign in. These are the connections. All right, so as we said before, we are going to do a few things. So first we want to rename this. So I'm gonna call it safety incidents because it just gave us the generic name of the template. When you go into my flows, you just wanna make sure you know, ah, I know exactly what that flow is. And we're gonna go here. So we have two steps in this flow. When an item is created, we're just gonna post a message and we'll come in here and we're gonna rename this. So we're gonna say when an item is created in the safety incident list, and then it's gonna ask us for some information. As you can see already, it's a little angry and it wants to plug things in. So this flow checker is going to tell you where your errors occur. So it's saying we need to fill in those two spaces. So we're gonna plug in our names. And safety events. All right, perchance you thought that you wanted when an item was created and you really meant to put when an item is created or modified for your trigger up at the top, you can actually delete it. So if you delete your trigger when you're starting out, Power Automate is going to remind you that you actually have to have a, a trigger here. So it won't let you go without one or else the flow won't be able to run. And you have a few options. Uh, you can type in the search box what you are looking for. You can find the button here if it's you know um, you know easily accessible in here or you can look through the triggers in this list too. So you've got a, a few ways to, be able to find it. We're just going to click here because this is what we had before. And then we'll go back and plug our information in. Great. Now we're going to post a message. So we're going to say, we're going to post a message to safety channel. And what I didn't show you is I have a team already ready here with an automated safety events uh, chat, or sorry, a Teams message. So this is where we're going to plug it in. So you do have the ability, and with this one, we are posting the message as me. So it'll pull up my profile, but you do have the ability to also post as the flow bot. And I would say the, the differences between these two is if somebody ends up replying to this message because I wrote it, I get the notification, whereas uh, there is another action. If we wanted to add another action in here, we could add one and we could search for Flowbot. I can show you real quick. 
and click all teams. And then let's just say, uh, robot. I can post a message as a flowbot to a channel. I can do that too. So you, as you can see, there is a variety of flexibility, even in these templates, you can add things that you like, but we're just gonna say it's gonna come from me. And again, Flowchecker is telling us we need to plug in some information. So we're gonna choose our team. And again, same if you cannot find, same as above, if you cannot find the SharePoint site that you want to refer to in the list, you can enter in custom value as well for team and channel. Let's try that again. Automated safety events, great. So before we continue on, you might have seen, ah, this menu pop up. And this is one of the greatest features I think available. This, not the only one, a lot of them are my favorite, but this is great. So dynamic content. Dynamic content is a menu of options, of data that you are able to pull from a previous step. As you noted when we you know, clicked here, uh, nothing pops up for dynamic content here because there isn't anything available. This trigger is the first thing. But if we click in this step, you'll see this gray header that'll tell us what the step name is and then all of the data that is available to us from this step. So it could be columns that appear in SharePoint, ones that are automatically generated from SharePoint. So, you know, created by, modified by, um, when the item was created, those are generated by SharePoint. We have access to those. We also have access to the fields that we put in the SharePoint list and a little bit more. So for example, employee name is one of the fields that we have in the list, but because I set it up as a people field in SharePoint, we can pull more information from our Outlook 365 profile if it's available to us. For example, I could pull it from department or job name. Um, in this tenant that I have, it's not set up, but in my work one, I can pull somebody's picture, I can pull their email address, I can pull a lot of things. So I think this is this is this expands a little bit more what you can do. So these are some of the generic ones that are created by SharePoint, and even things like if you wanted a link to the list item, you could pull that too. So you don't have to worry about capturing the URL and then sticking in an email. You can just click the link to an item. It will give you a um, it'll give you a URL. You'll have to take a step further if you want it to make it a a clickable hyperlink, but that's okay too. All right, um, so we are going to draft this message. This step is formatted in HTML, so we don't, it, it's automatically done for, so we don't need to worry about uh, doing any coding here. There are a few steps like chatbot messages that are done in markdown formatting, and there is documentation available online that you can find if you want to do things such as breaks or bolding or ita you know, italics, changing the color, you can do that kind of thing. But here it gives, it already gives us a cute little menu, so we don't need to worry about actually putting the formatting in here. So we are going to pull a few items for uh, this message. First, we want name. We want the employee name. So I'm going to say name. And let's just make this bold, just so you can see what it looks like. So it just makes it bold. So we're going to pull name. And you can search for the name. So we're going to do employee display name. Next, we are going to do, what did we say? Maybe the date that this was. Uh, this happened. So we're going to do the instant. You can type it in here. Oops, not fate, date. Maybe my fate is typos today. All right, date and time. So this is going to return a date and time string. Um, there might have been a change to it because when I was uh, playing around with this earlier, it actually doesn't return the month, month, day, day, year, 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 and then a time string, it actually returns it in a nicely formatted date. But I have a format that I wanna use. So let's create an expression over in this expression tabs. So perchance you need to manipulate some data. Could be anything from you want to put together two words from two different um, or two different pieces of dynamic content and you, um, you know, like somebody's name and their email address. In one space, you could use an expression for concatenation. If you wanted to do a calculation, you have the ability to do a calculation. If you need to set a condition, if you need to convert text, there are a ton of things here that are available to you. The internet has a lot of great resources. Uh, Microsoft also has documentation on how to format your expressions. So you can play around with these two. Here, what I want to do is I want to 
format the date and time to something that I like. So I'm going to plug in, I could either search for it down here for format date time in the format date time area if I do see more, but I don't want to. So I'm just going to plug it in and we'll see it offers me a few options. So format date time, we're going to do our parentheses and this is going to be a string operation. And whoops, try that again. Date time. I won't try to get rid of that box. And so what we can do is instead of having to type in the um, data that this expression is going to look for, we can go over to dynamic content and just plug it in. So let's look for date. We want to do date and time. So this is the information that we want. And it's going to plug in what we need, because I wouldn't have known to do that. You're not going to know to do that off the top of your head. As you get a little bit more advanced, you're like, oh yeah, and I can bang that out, no issue. So I'm going to do a comma, do this, and then this is where we're going to set our format. So I'm going to say we want day, day, month, 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 year, 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 year as our format. And I'm also going to show you use of the comment section. And click OK. So I'm going to leave this here so you can see what the actual format date time that Power Automate's going to give us. And then I'm also going to show you that we can change it in an expression. And I'm going to actually add a comment here since we've got one expression, which gives me a really easy glance. I don't have to hover over this to figure out what it is, but it's a, a simple way of notation. This doesn't really work if you've got, say, multiple expressions that you're using in a particular step, which is where you could, there's a step called compose, where you could just use one expression there and plug it in in the comments, plug the actual expression in the comments, and I like to use that too. So I can I can actually show you what that looks like. Add in. So this is compose, and this is just a simple input and output uh, step. So I'm going to paste this here. I do this. I'm going to add a comment. And then I could use the dynamic content from here in this compose step actually instead of plugging this in here. There's no one right way to flow. There are more efficient ways to flow. And as you go along, you may say, oh, actually compose might be a better way for me to do this than just sticking it directly in the message. Okay, we are running low on time. So I'm going to just leave this here. But we can see here now, now this dynamic content is also available to us and it'll print out the same thing. All right, we've got a few more fields to add. So we are going to do date of incident. Let's do incident category value. So incident category. And we're going to choose value here because if we, this might come out a little, there we go. If I just choose incident uh, category. Normally there's there's like value and something else, but uh, the value is going to pull one item from an array. So if you have a drop down menu with multiple selections, you wanna make sure you use value so you just capture the one and Power Automate isn't going to send you through a couple of loops. That's extraneous information. And then I think it was the last thing that we wanted, we wanted name and type of incident. type of incident value, and then we want the description. And this is just so it doesn't end up being bolded, or maybe I got it backwards. We'll see what happens. All right, so we have just built our first flow, and that took us, with all my explanations, what, maybe 10 minutes? It is just that easy. So we're going to save it, and now we are going to run it. So it tells us that it's ready to go. We're gonna come over here to test, and you're gonna have two options. You're gonna manually be able to trigger it, which means you're gonna stick something in the SharePoint list, and so it would operate just as the flow would normally run if somebody were to stick it in there, or automatically. So if we had any sort of run history, we could take the same data from a previous run and rerun um, the flow in order to generate you know, whatever outcome we would like. We don't have any available because we've never run this before, so we're gonna choose manually and we're gonna click test. And then now it's telling us to see it work, we have to add an item to the SharePoint list. So we're gonna go over here, click new, and we're gonna choose, looks like injury or illness. Type of, we're gonna say it is a chemical hazard and it is going to happen, maybe it happened on the 16th. And we're gonna use my name, people field, 
and we're gonna say um, recording. Uh, let's say some sea vinegar. Blue vinegar. I'm gonna say it's made some some vinegar. I'm gonna click save. So I'll create this here. And we're going to go back to the flow and already it's picked up that something has been added to this list. So it should take just a couple seconds and great, we're done. So we can open all of this up. So when an item is created, we gave it a site address. The list name actually becomes a nonsensical ID in the cloud. Our compose step, right? So we ended up pulling the date that we needed doing format date time for when it was created. Remember, we just plugged in an expression. It gave us a simple output. And then you can see here that it ended up formatting for us too, which we'll be able to see in the team, but it gave us everything that we wanted. Okay, great. So let's go check out the output in Teams. Perfect. So it gave us everything that we wanted. The formatting's a little funky because I pressed the bold button accidentally in a few places, but you can see the original date format was year, month, day. And now we have it in a format that we like. So you have the ability to do that. And there's a ton of manipulations that you can do. If we wanted to take this a little bit further, we could add a few steps to this. Maybe we end up sending a chat message to the employee that was injured and say, thanks for your submission. Um, and maybe we put a couple of buttons in there and say, is there any additional information that you forgot? And they can plug it into a box and then the SharePoint list will update with additional comments. Uh, it could do things like, Perhaps there is some sort of a uh, incident root cause analysis sheet, which actually we have this. So it is a root cause analysis, um, uh, like data collection gathering. And we can send that to the employee. And if we're using a word template, it can already have their name filled in, the incident, the date that it happened, and maybe there's just some extraneous details. So there are a ton of capabilities for this. So we build our first flow. I hope this has inspired you to um, go a little bit further in your search and to mystify it a little bit. So we're gonna go back just to the slide so I can give you some resources. So we're just gonna give you something to help you get started. Places to go, YouTube. When you are starting out, I think some great names to check out are John Levesque. He's got some beginner playlists for a car automate. Um, he'll do some things himself. He also invites friends of the Flow fam um, there to also create use cases and, and walk you through some flows. Matt Collins Jones, when you are getting into expressions, when you are getting into adaptive cars, Matt Collins Jones has this incredible way of explaining things that doesn't make you feel dumb, but walks you step by step of how to do it. And he always has some sort of hilarious content. One day I was watching a video about adaptive cards and suddenly the output was a half, uh, a, sh a shirtless picture of Jeff Goldblum as the output in a team's message and it cracks me up. So he's, he's a great one. Shane Cowes is also wonderful for beginner content. And then if you're looking specifically, I would say for um, an application, Eliza Benitez is excellent with Dynamics 365 and Peter Veenstra does a ton of stuff with SharePoint. He always has some great hacks as well. You can find Eliza on YouTube and sorry, I should have put Peter in a, at least said that he, this is a blog of his that he has. Twitter is a great resource as well. Find people that you like uh, and follow them. So myself, uh, some of the names that you're finding on YouTube, some of the guests here as speakers at the conference, follow them. They're probably posting content as well. And you can find us if you need help with the hashtags FlowFam, Power Automate, and Power Addicts. We're all addicted to Twitter anyway, and somebody will help you. Feel free just to reach out to us, tag us in a post if you need a little bit of assistance. I have that happen. I've made some great friends in the internet because of it. And you'll also find that there are advertised community events. Um, so it could be a Power BI in a day class. It could be some sort of a community call. It could be a boot camp. It could be a hackathon that you could join. The Power Users Community is a, it's through Microsoft, but it is a bunch of message boards and forums. You can go post screenshots uh, and questions that you have about your flow and community members will come in, swoop in to help save the day and explain things to you and give you your solutions. I think it's wonderful. You can find the website here. And then Bill Gates is in it. Uh, in your preferred search engine, you can type in a couple of keywords for what you're looking for, a tip that I learned, 
very recently was try both Power Automate and Microsoft Flow. So do a search for each because uh, you algorithms are getting a little bit better for consolidating that they're you know both the same thing, but you might get a few more results searching one or the other. There are Power Automate in a day training courses. You can find these on Microsoft.com. They're available worldwide and they're free. There are also meetup groups available. I belong to one like out in, uh, in I forget where at this point, but it doesn't matter because it's all virtual, but it's great to meet other people and boot camps. So whether it's a Microsoft sponsored or community sponsored one. So those are the resources I'm gonna give you. And by the way, I forgot to mention, if you do not have an Office 365 account, uh, you can register for a free developer account at developer.microsoft.com. It is a 90 day trial, but it will allow you to start playing around in Power Automate. And if I'm not mistaken, it allows you to extend it for a little bit longer as well. So you can start playing. All right. That is all I have for you today. Y'all are fantastic listeners. Didn't even interrupt me once. I'm glad I got this off my chest and I hope you learned something today. So thank you for joining. If you would like to rewatch my session, it should be available on YouTube within about a week. And I hope you enjoy the rest of Scottish Summit. Take care.